I don't think it takes a genius to, to come to this realization that if you stop eating or you eat significantly less food, that you will lose weight. Yes, you will lose weight doing this, but what is the price that you will pay? Because you will pay a price. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not worth it. Links in my bio and use my coupon code and buy all this and then you'll heal your gut too. You may not see the effects of it right now while you're starving yourself, trying to get skinny, but down the line, when you have premature menopause and weak ass bones, you're gonna be like, what the f Like, what did I do to myself? Hello, my beautiful Trinity beings, and welcome back, or welcome if you are new. My name is Victoria. I'm a certified holistic women's health and fitness coach, prenatal, postnatal specialist, trauma-informed somatics practitioner, naturopathic practitioner, and herbalist. So basically, I am obsessed with helping women, moms and soon-to-be moms, thrive in their bodies so they can thrive in motherhood and live their mommy dream life, okay? So if you're wondering if you're in the right place, I can 100% guarantee that you are, all right? So let's get into today's topic, which is these influencers, y'all, they are leading you straight to hell, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, somebody has to say it. These influencers are killing you. Like it is, it's killing me to see these influencers lead all these women, thousands and hundreds of thousands of women astray. And I just, I'm really nervous for the future because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of women with a lot of severe hormonal imbalances. And um, even further down the line, there's gonna be some women with some serious issues um, because the things that they're telling people to do, these influencers, um, they can do some really long-term damage and some irreversible damage, okay? So I'm gonna help you avoid that and tell the truth and give you guys the facts, okay? So you don't have to listen to these influencers and take health advice from them anymore, okay? I promise you, you don't, okay? So let's break it down. First, we'll start off with today's tea of the day. And you know I always drop the tea of the day. So today we have a combination of Tulsi and Oat Straw. Tulsi and Oat Straw is one of my favorite blends. Tulsi is an amazing adaptogen, great if you're dealing with stress, which we're actually gonna talk about a lot today. And Oat Straw is an amazing nervine, which is really great for regulating the nervous system, calming the nervous system. And if you're dealing with stress and anxiety, this is a great combination. Okay, so that's the tea of the day. As you can see, it's very hot, so I'm gonna let it cool down, okay? And now let's get into the topic of the day. So intermittent fasting, I keep seeing these influencers talk about intermittent fasting, making these outrageous claims that it healed their gut, that it healed their hormones, which is very ironic because intermittent fasting will destroy hormonal balance for women. And women, uh, Listen, guys, women cannot just jump on every single fad or dietary fad that comes out. It is just not the way that it works. We are built so unique and so comp so unique and we're so complex and our hormonal system is very complex. So there are certain things that women just can't do. You know, uh, men can get away with intermittent fasting, but women, unfortunately for us, we were built to get pregnant to conceive. And so <laughs> even if you don't want to have kids, this stuff affects your health. It's, it's really important because it's the very foundation of our makeup. And so the rules are different for us gals. Okay. So we have to really, really, really be careful who we are taking advice from um, because these influencers who, you know, are great to go to for, you know, makeup tips or, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know, what else are they good for? Uh, I don't know, fashion, whatever, like, <laughs> but have absolutely no certifications, formal training, or even any experience with helping anybody else um, with their health or fitness, you know what I mean? They just lost some weight and they think that they can just 
spread misinformation. It's it's really bad, guys. Okay, because we were designed to conceive, to to carry life for nine months and give birth and breastfeed, whether you want to have kids or not, this a hundred percent affects your health. The choices you make, the things that you choose to do to your body, it can really take a toll on your health and create serious effects, domino effects, and long term effects, and some things that can be even irreversible. Okay, so let's talk about why intermittent fasting is a bad idea for women and how it destroys hormonal health. First, let's break down intermittent fasting, right? Because fasting is pretty broad. There's multiple ways you can fast, right? There's multiple ways you can even do intermittent fasting. But usually the idea is these large chunks of time throughout the day where we're restricting and uh, not eating. <laughs> and then um, you have a small window of time to eat. So what this kind of boils down to is just eating less calories, eating less food. Um, and so, you know, since these people and these influencers, they start intermittent fasting and they lose weight. Like, of course you lose weight. You will lose weight intermittent fasting. Yeah, it's possible. Why? Because you're not eating. You're, you're like, <laughs> I don't think there's anything revolutionary about fasting. People like present fasting and intermittent fasting like it's this revolutionary thing and it has all these health benefits. And, and we're going to talk about how fasting in a particular way of fasting can be beneficial. But overall, intermittent fasting is more does, does a lot more damage than good. There's nothing revolutionary about not eating. Like if you don't eat, you will lose weight. I think that that's pretty like basic. I don't think it takes a genius to, to come to this realization that if you stop eating or you eat significantly less food, that you will lose weight. Yes, you will lose weight doing this, but what is the price that you will pay? Because you will pay a price. And I'm going to tell you, it's not worth it because there's a way to reach your weight loss goals or your health goals without having to destroy your health physically and mentally in the process. Okay. So yes, you are going to be eating less food, but there are even studies that show there's absolutely no benefit to intermittent fasting when it compared to basic calorie restriction. So uh, your, your typical calorie deficit that you hear about, there's absolutely no difference when it comes to the health benefits, okay, when, it, when we're talking about intermittent fasting. So it's just another way to restrict. It's just another style, another form of restriction. And there's nothing very special about it, okay? So yeah, you'll see people lose weight doing it. Um, but number one, can they sustain that weight loss? Is it sustainable? And two, do they have a healthy hormonal cycle? Do they have a healthy reproductive system? Are their hormones in balance? And is their mind okay? Are they developing an eating disorder? Is their disordered eating habits at play? Okay, there's a lot to dive into and we're gonna get into it, okay? So let's talk about the basics and just the simple basics of how intermittent fasting destroys female hormonal health, okay? So you have to understand this concept first before we get into this. So everything that you do, all the behaviors that you have, all the choices that you make is constantly sending a message to your body whether you're aware of it or not, okay? So it all boils down to the fact that you are either telling your body, you're either sending the message to your body that it is safe or that it is unsafe. That's what this all boils down to, okay? And this happens in so many different ways, whether you are aware of it or not. You're constantly giving your body the message of whether it is safe or unsafe or in danger. And because we are women and we were designed to carry life, to carry a baby for nine months, our body is super hyper aware of this because it needs to feel safe in order to do so. So when the body gets the message that is in danger or unsafe, it will start to 
put other functions on the back burner because its main priority is survival. Whenever you tell your body that it is in danger, it will always prioritize survival, your survival and nobody else, okay? So when you send your body this message, it decides to put everything else on the back burner, hormonal health reproductive health gets put on the back burner. Digestive health gets put on the back burner. Vitality, longevity gets put on the back burner because it doesn't care about that. Its only concern is keeping you alive right here, right now. And it's not worried about doing things in the future, like having great energy levels and vitality and strong bones and um, being able to reproduce and conceive, right? If your body thinks that you can't even survive, why would it why, why would it put you in a position where you would become pregnant and, and conceive? It doesn't think it's safe. So intermittent fasting does a few things. The first thing it does is it raises cortisol levels. We all know cortisol is the stress hormone. And when cortisol levels are raised, it puts a strain on your adrenals. Your adrenals is what produces cortisol. And most people are already walking around with something called adrenal fatigue. And when you constantly continue to produce more cortisol, you constantly continue to strain the adrenals. And there's three stages of adrenal fatigue. The third one being failure. And this is when your adrenals are so tapped, you're like you can barely survive, okay? And this causes a ton of health issues. And because we're in a society where people are already in a heightened stress state in a day-to-day, because the activities that they do on a day-to-day are already stress-inducing and constantly raising cortisol levels, anything extra you do to produce more cortisol is just damaging your adrenals more and more and more. And this can create really long-term damage. Like if you are in adrenal fatigue for a long time and you get to stage three and you stay in stage three for a long time. We're talking about premature menopause. And when you do get menopause, we're talking about really, really, really bad symptoms of it. Okay. So like extreme severe depression and anxiety, really bad hot flashes, really bad energy levels, like super low, like chronic fatigue. Like I'm talking just miserable. Okay. Miserable. And this is what adrenal fatigue can lead to this is why it's so important for women to prioritize their hormonal health. You have to let your body know that it's safe and that there's food available. Keeping healthy levels of cortisol is top priority in today's society. And anything that raises them, like intermittent fasting, is damaging your hormonal health on so many different levels. And it's going to create a domino and ripple effect. So another concept that I want to talk about is something called energy availability. We've all heard every gym bro talk about calories in versus calories out calories in versus calories out. I know you've heard that a million times from some gym bro. And that's called energy balance. It's a very simplified equation of calories in minus calories out. But that does not consider and bring into the equation your daily activities that you're doing, metabolic functions within the body, and the amount of calories that your body needs, the energy that your body needs to do your day-to-day and to do the simple metabolic functions that it needs to do to keep you alive. So energy availability calculates how many calories are in the tank. So how much gas you got in the tank for your day-to-day activities, for your exercises, and for all of your metabolic functions. And when you don't have enough energy available to you and your body doesn't have the calories, the energy needed to do the basic things that it needs to do and for you to do your day-to-day functions and you're exercising on top of it, you put it in the state of like, you're like it's going like, what the f-? Like It's like, there's there's no food. Like you're telling your body, hey, every single day, hey guys, there's no food here. And your body's like, all right, there's no food. Well, okay, I guess it's not safe to reproduce. So then something called luteinizing hormone tanks. And this creates a domino effect for your estrogen levels, your progesterone levels. I mean, all of your sex steroid hormones, which are really important for reproductive health. Even if you don't want to have kids, you need to have adequate amounts of estrogen and progesterone in your system to function. Estrogen is really, really, really important for a lot of functions in our body, but really important for bone health. When we have low estrogen and low progesterone, 
testosterone. I mean, it's it's a it's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for feeling like crap, and it's also going to lead to weak bones. It takes away your bone density. So this means like you're going to be more susceptible to fractures. I mean, osteoporosis when you get older. I mean, you may not see the effects of it right now while you're starving yourself trying to get skinny, but down the line when you have premature menopause and weak ass bones, you're going to be like, what the f like, what did I do to myself? And you're going to be miserable all because you listen to some influencer who told you to fast to lose weight because that's how she got skinny. And it's really, really sad. And it's really, really scary. And it's something you should be really concerned about. You got to remember that you're always communicating to your body. And you got to realize like, if you sleep eight hours and you wake up, you've already fasted for eight hours hours you're gonna skip breakfast and continue to fast for more like for like five more hours or three more hours like it's so terrible for hormonal health breakfast is the most important i know you heard this but like it's not a cliche breakfast is the most important meal of the day say it with me breakfast is the most important meal of the day you need to have adequate amount of protein healthy fats and carbohydrates in your first meal of the day especially protein you have to have adequate amounts of protein in your breakfast when you first wake up in order to have healthy hormonal balance it's so bad to skip breakfast it's so bad to skip breakfast and if you wake up and you have no appetite that is a sure sign that you are running on stress hormones that you are running up your cortisol levels and that you were in one of the stages of adrenal fatigue so if you wake up without appetite and you're like so i don't i don't see the problem with skipping breakfast i intermittent fast naturally i wake up and i don't have an appetite so i don't see the problem with intermittent fasting if you wake up without an appetite that is a sure sign of adrenal fatigue which is a severe hormonal imbalance and so i would really 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 get a hormonal test um, do a saliva test for your cortisol levels and I guarantee you, you're in one of the stages of adrenal fatigue. So remember that it all comes down to letting your body know that it is safe. So like I said, if you are day in and day out giving your body the message that there's no food available and it's the energy availability is below the critical threshold and you're just telling your body day in after day out that there's no energy available, there's no calories available, there's no food to do these functions, it's going to say, all right, there's no food. It's not safe to conceive, which means we're going to stop producing luteinizing hormone and estrogen and progesterone. We're going to downregulate digestive health. And another thing that it does is it goes into conservation mode. So now you're burning less calories at rest. So as soon as you get sick of intermittent fasting, which you eventually will because it's, unas because it's very unsustainable. So as soon as you get sick of doing that crap and you start eating again, you're going to gain like probably twice the amount of weight back that you tried to lose. And you're not going to be able to burn calories at rest like you would have if you were, you know, eating. <laughs> it's just like... It's just like Another thing that happens is a hormone called leptin tanks. And this is the hormone that tells your brain if you're full. So now you have a raging appetite. You have a screwed up thyroid. You have adrenals that are completely fatigued and sick and tired of producing cortisol to keep you alive. And now you have low estrogen and low progesterone levels, which is going to lead to a plethora of symptoms that are going to really, really suck down the line. And then when you finally do start to eat, your body is going to be in conservation mode. So you're going to store more of what you eat. And because of the hormonal imbalance and the low levels of estrogen and progesterone, you're most likely going to store that weight um, in your midsection. So you're creating a perfect storm for, I don't know, like worst case scenario, if you're really trying to like improve your health and fitness, like it's going to do the opposite. Um, it may take some time. Like I said, this won't happen overnight. You'll start to lose weight. 
you'll see the weight loss results and you'll think that it's the greatest thing in the world because you'll start dropping the pounds. But once your adrenals are completely fatigued in a few years down the line, when maybe you want to start having kids, um, you're probably going to run into some issues with fertility. And I mean, I don't want to even get into the mental health issues that can happen from intermittent fasting because of all of the disordered eating behaviors that majority of women already deal with. And a lot of the times what you'll see is people who go to intermittent fasting are transitioning from one eating disorder to another. So they really have either really bad disordered eating behaviors or a full-blown eating disorder. And then they transition to intermittent fasting and it's really just cloaking and hiding their eating disorder. And then you'll see people develop eating disorder and eating disorder or disordered eating habits, um, dipping in intermittent fasting. And I, and, and once again, it's just unsustainable. It is unsustainable to just starve yourself all day. One, because of the health issues going to lead to in the long term, And two, like you're going to get sick of it. You're not going to want to do it anymore. You're not going to want to be like, Oh, I can't eat right now. Like Got to wait till whatever o'clock, you know, like, it's just like, what makes you think that this is going to be a good idea long term? I just had to get on here and record this because I saw this one influencer who was like, I lost all this weight. I lost 30 pounds intermittent fasting and I healed my gut and I healed my hormones. And it's like, girl, what evidence do you have that you healed your hormones? She was talking about like, she couldn't even eat beans without bloating. And I'm like, so you healed your gut, but you can't eat beans without bloating. I'm pretty sure like, unless you have a really like rare intolerance to legumes, <laughs> Like you can't eat beans without bloating because you never rebuilt your gut lining. Like your gut is not healed. Like you just lost some weight, girl. Like you did not heal. Shit. You didn't heal jack. Shit. And it's just like, it's all this clickbaity things that, you know, and I, I just feel like it's exploitation of your audience at that point. I think it's so irresponsible and exploitive to like, Use your before and after pictures. Like, I lost all this weight and I'm skinny now. And this is why it's such a bad idea to take health advice from people who have absolutely no training in health, nutrition, or fitness. Like, it's really bad. You even got to be careful when you're picking someone to take advice from who is trained in health and fitness. Like, I've heard people, like, I've had clients who have had trainers before me who, like, it's nightmare stories. It's horrible. Like, there are people out there who developed eating disorders from working with a trainer. Like you can't just screw around and just take advice from anybody. As like you got to be careful from the people who do have training, let alone someone who has absolutely none who just like read one book one day and was like, "Oh, I, I got it all figured out. I read a book." <laughs> like she did a what I eat in a day video after she made these videos of all these gut health videos. And it was like, I don't know what time she had her first meal, but <laughs> it was a ridiculous time. I'm pretty sure. And the, the meal itself was absolutely ridiculous as well. It was like cucumbers and cut up peppers with some store bought dressing. And I'm like, girl, like, oh my God, how many people are going to follow this girl's advice and eat sliced up peppers? with store-bought dressing as their first meal of the day at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. How many people are going to do this to themselves? Like, oh my God, like there's no protein. There was no protein in sight for like the whole day. It was just like, it just looked like an eating disorder. That's exactly what it looked like. Like this girl either already had an eating disorder or is currently like in the depths of her eating disorder right now. And it's sad, but she's just celebrating her skinny body and she's just like using that to convince other people that they should do the same thing she's doing. And it's just, there's so many people out there like that. You know, don't even get me started on the influencers who tell you, oh, I healed my gut with this product and that product. And I, and if you, you know, just use the, the all these links in my bio and use my coupon code and buy all this stuff. And then you'll heal your gut too. And it's like, first of all, you don't need to buy any supplement to heal your gut. Nope. You don't even need a probiotic supplement to heal your gut. You don't. 
In fact, probiotic supplements are not that effective because there's an alpha strain that consumes all the rest of the strains. And by the time you get your probiotic off the shelf, you're only left with a few strains, one or two strains, and you don't have that diversity um, of bacteria that you need, that, that those live cultures that you need in order to really improve your gut microbiome. So all these people telling you, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy this green drink, buy Bloom, buy all this crap. Like, guys, it's all nonsense. It's all BS. Stop taking health advice from influencers. Like, they are the masters of just clickbaiting you and getting views and getting you to click those links in their bios so they can make a buck off of you and destroy your health in the process. And they don't give a damn. They don't care. Nobody's going to hold them accountable. They can say whatever they want on the internet. You know what I mean? So it's up to you to be diligent. It's up to you to make the right choices. But I promise you, intermittent fasting will not heal your gut, will not heal your hormones, but it will in fact destroy your hormones and create long-term damage and even irreversible damage because when you destroy your bone density to a certain point there ain't no going back so you can listen to them if you want but i promise you there's a better way to lose weight there's a better way to achieve your weight loss goals to achieve your health goals to achieve your fitness goal whatever your body goals are you can achieve it without destroying your health in the process so I wanted to mention this because it's not something that we covered in this episode. This episode was specifically about intermittent fasting, but not fasting as a whole. There are other ways to fast and there is a way to see benefits from fasting. It's not intermittent fasting though. It would have to A, be a water fast and B, be for at least 48 to 72 hours. And really the 72 hour is the mark when you would actually see benefits of fasting. That's when the cells will start to regenerate and it would actually be beneficial to fast. And this is something that should be done only once in a while, not something you do all the time. This is totally different from intermittent fasting. We are chronically day in and day out under that critical threshold and having that low energy availability, which is horrible for your hormones. But yes, there is a way to benefit from fasting once in a blue moon, and that doesn't even cover the spiritual aspect of fasting because there is a spiritual aspect of fasting as well that we didn't co uh, cover. But that is not intermittent fasting, okay? We were talking about specifically intermittent fasting, which is a no. Uh, no. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify that and throw that in here just so you have some clarification. There's a way that is sustainable and there is a way that is healthy and holistic and that will actually nourish you physically and mentally and even spiritually so that you can live a life that is like that. So you can thrive. So you can have vitality. So you can have longevity. So when you do decide that you want to have kids and get pregnant, you can do it easily. And you can have a healthy, beautiful pregnancy and a healthy, beautiful postpartum period. And you won't have these severe hormonal imbalances. You won't get postpartum depletion and you won't have this severe adrenal fatigue making you feel exhausted all the time, all the chronic fatigue that all these moms complain about. That's all hormonal imbalance. That's not because being a mom sucks. That's not because being a mom is so hard and so exhausting. That is all hormonal imbalance. And it's behaviors like this stuff here that leads women down these long paths of misery that they never had to go down, okay? But there is a better way. There is. If you are interested in a sustainable way of losing weight that will actually heal your hormones and will actually heal your gut and will actually nourish your nervous system and nourish your adrenals and give you a thriving life, then subscribe to this channel, follow me on Instagram, and like learn from the master, baby, okay? <laughs> Okay, I will lead you down the right path. I promise you. I promise you. I will lead you down a better path. And you won't have to starve yourself all day and eat peppers and 
store-bought dressing in order to achieve your fitness goals. I promise you, you don't have to do that, okay? I promise you don't have to do it. Put the pepper down, girl. Put it down, all right? Take my hand. There's a better way. I know a lot of people love intermittent fasting. I know a lot of people swear by it because, you know, it did this for them. It did that for them. They lost this weight, you know. When you stop eating a bunch of processed junk, it can do a lot. Yeah, when you stop eating the typical American diet, yeah, you'll see improvements. So you eat less, yeah, you'll see improvements. But once again, what is the long-term damage? What is the cost that you're paying in exchange for that? You know what I mean? I will leave some studies linked below so you can check them out yourself. That way you know I'm not just yapping nonsense like these influencers um, and you can do your own research and make your own informed decision and to, um, I don't know, listen to someone who actually has helped women lose weight, not just lose lost weight themselves. Anybody can lose weight. And this is why I wouldn't recommend anybody to take health advice from anyone whose only claim or credential is that they lost weight themselves. Because majority of the time, when these people lose weight, it's with unsustainable, unhealthy methods. And, um, yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, I didn't get to drink my tea, but I'm going to drink it now. Mm -hmm. That's that good stuff. All right, guys. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.